shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the temple of an eye, at the first, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this is corrupt, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, death is swallowed up in glory, in victory. O death, where is the sting? O grave, where is the victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58, the last verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, ma'am. We'll be taking our fourth hymn. I am pressing on the upward way. Make us to please rise as we take the hymn. Thank you. 
Amen. It's a prayer the Lord will lift up to us up to higher grounds in Jesus' name. We'll be taking our fourth Bible reading for this Lord's service to lead us in this. I'd like to invite Mrs. Rose or Latero. The fourth Bible reading for this edition uh, will be taken from John chapter 14, verse 1 to 7. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And ye, if ye have known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. May God bless the reading of the book. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You're living souls in this place. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. We want to move on in today's uh, service. Our mommy has lived a glorious life. She has impacted people. And we know many of us have things to say about our dear mommy. But we're just going to give room for few testimonies now because of our time. I'm sure that there will be avenues for us to talk together and reflect on the good things, the good things that God has done through her. So we'll be inviting uh, just one person from the family, and then one from the church that she was very active in, and then one person from the neighborhood. Just come forward, and in just a few minutes, just tell us, share testimony of God's goodness through our mother and our sister. So we like. Just one person from the family to come over and care. Yeah, okay, my brother. Come forward. That's my name. Good evening, everyone. My name is Leke Olatero Labidi. I am mommy's last biological son. And I say biological because there were many others who were not biological children. My mom had many children and many grandchildren who were not biological. In 1991, I remember my mom owning a bookshop in Fatulu. And I remember attending the bookshop for her. Um, we started bonding right there. And from then on, I learned so many things from her. How to create money out of nothing. How to, how to use her hands and create meaning for her family. And from that time to now, she created many businesses. Um, I remember in 98, we had a poultry farm somewhere not too far from here, Luaga. Um, it was mom's efforts that roofed this house in 1998. Because I remember we had dad and mom, they had spent money to bring the house up to that point. And then the roofing was required, so we had to raise 500 chicks 
And it was after we sold those 500 that we were able to roof the house and we moved here sometime in 1998. Um, my dad was a contractor, you know, so funds came in every now and then, you know, three months, six months. But the money we used to eat, like, every day, you know, emergencies, it always came from mommy's, you know, sweat. And she's very remembered. Now, this is just about her entrepreneurial side. I think the biggest thing anyone can say about her is that mommy was a giver. She, she, she didn't care what it was. There was no limit to what she could give. If she could give away her eyes, she would. So many times you go out on the street, you pick someone she didn't know, bring into the house, and all of a sudden we had a new brother. Like, ah, more conche padia and be conya, coni be tone stay, see, and you go as go as this other one, just for a little while, just for a little while. There was a guy who was accused of stealing somewhere who came to the house. I just came back one time and I, ah, who's this guy? It was only recently that. Well, my cousin was telling me, ah, but why Jale knew? Everybody was like, why Jale? But mommy is away running, but go Jale. The guy stayed in the house for three years. <laughs> so that's how my mom was. She she would call my brother. I mean, this is from his own testimony. She would call my brother and say, ah, mo pa jale ni kon no moto. Ah, o ni asma. Show mo ko wano ni asma. O ni wot, o ni lati help eh. In fact, o ni washe, o ni lati washe fun. Eh, 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 ni, o ni di scholarship. My mom would do all of that. She she would go out of her way. She would borrow money on behalf of other people. She would guarantee if they didn't pay, she would pay on their behalf. She would, I mean, there was she she was like that. You know, so for the first nine days after I came to Lagos, I came to be with her in the hospital. And I, I can go on and on about who she was, but Time won't permit us. But all I can say is, I had a good testimony on her last day in the hospital. I came in on on the seventeenth of um, on the seventeenth of July just to be with her in the hospital. And as I came directly from the airport, I just went there, and I saw her. She was in a very bad way. I started talking to her. Started, you won't die. It's not your time yet. I kept praying and prayed virtually almost all through the night. But in the morning she passed. And the only thing I knew when, you know, in those last moments was, as I was praying, she was saying amen. You know, she, was, she didn't eat. But then she said, ah, mommy, I'm going to Jenny, uh, what about this other one? She said, no. Ah, mommy, kill a fair. Nah, mommy, move it. Only ye, move fair. As in, I want eternal life. And Sister Yabo is over there. Can you just wave your hands to everybody? So she then went on and said, well, if that is what you want, then God will receive you. And so she held a prayer with her, a, prayer, a forgiveness of saints prayer, that anything that will stand in her way of seeing Christ will be removed. And she said, and when my brother came in later in the day, she was like, ah, she ah, she yani. Ah, Yani. You know, so from from 6 30 a.m. on on July 7, July 18 to now, I cried like at least I cried like every day until Monday this week. And then my only consolation is that she knew Christ. Which is the greatest thing anybody can have. Even if you are the richest guy in the world, you are Bill Gates, you are whoever. If you don't have Christ, you're going to hell. You're done. You're doomed, man. So my message to everyone here is she has run a race. She has run a very good race. She wrote her name in gold. Now it's left for all of us to follow her example. Not just was she a giver. There are people who don't follow Christ are givers. There are people who follow Satan who are givers. So the most critical thing, apart from being a giver, whatever the nice things that people can say about you, this person is a Jesus follower. Because if you are not a Jesus follower, even if you live to be 200 years, that's not an end. So that's my only consolation.
So I say, Mommy, we will meet again, certainly. And may God bless your heart. Thank you for giving me so much. One thing I forgot to mention, even as an adult, if I needed, if I needed bailouts, my mom would bail me out. You know, my mom would bail me out. So, even though we used to take care of her in our own little way, I thought to myself, we've not done enough for her. I could never, ever repay all that she did for me. But I thank God for everything. Thank you for coming to honor our presence and may God bless you. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's our one from the church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the life of our sister, Star Bumi. We met in the church. And since I've met her, she has been a wonderful sister. We were together in the Garden of Peace Elders Fellowship. She was one of the financial members. And uh, she loves to work for the Lord. And she was one of the past uh, prayer coordinators that we had in our executives. And she's somebody that there's no time we call. she's one of the people that when I call upon you no know, to her for prayers, she will always you know, call. And between 19, between 2018 and 2019, before the COVID, myself, Mommy Olagbegi, and Brother Emmanuel were the three coordinating the morning prayer every day, Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday, every day. Uh, Mommy Olagbegi will come, even though she may be late at times, but she will come. Before we finish the program, she will come. And when she's coming, she will bring either one person or the other. Maybe, as you have already said, maybe somebody who is homeless, or somebody that needs money, or somebody that needs help. She will say, Mama, I do that. We should pray for this one. This one needs a house. This one needs money. This one needs, and that is her life. You know, she's a giver. And there's nothing she cannot give at the expense of her comfort. She's very generous. Even uh, when she, uh, before the before the, the, the her death, I think she attended the um, June June Thanksgiving. But then we were going out for an outing. She met me at the toilet. She said, oh, kingdom, I brought my money for, for the for the dues. Right inside the toilet, then she was giving them to she was giving it to me. I was like, wait for me. She said, I, I know, I know people are in a hurry. And after giving me the money, and that was the last time I saw her. So when I heard that she was sick. I went to the hospital, the couple of the elders went there. And when I saw her, what she was saying is that, is that a kindro? Is that a kindro? Oh yeah, my sister, pray for me. I was like, hello, the mommy. She said, I don't know, it's awful. I said, we cough here. Then we started praying. And she started saying, amen, 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 amen. And she said one thing. She said, eh, oh, one lady, my pain. She said, please, help me to rebook it. I know you can pray very well. And so that has been our prayer point since that time. So after leaving the hospital, me and the others we organized prayers and we you know we're coming to church to pray for her. Even on that fateful day, when we went back to I in IDH, the session has been taken to Ikeja. And on getting to Ikeja, when I saw her, the lady staying by her said that are you Mrs. Akindro? I said yes, yeah. sir. Mommy has been talking about you since the night that she was saying and uh, she was just saying amen, amen throughout the night. As if you were there praying for her. I said, Well, I said our heart is praying for her. Immediately I left, I organized another prayer point, another prayer meeting, and we're praying for her. Even on Sunday that she died, it was so funny. I've even made an announcement that all the others they should stay behind that we're going to pray for her. On coming, you know, when I, I went to the prayer room, on coming back from the prayer room, that was when I now called Daddy that uh, Daddy, are you going to the hospital so that we can meet you there? She said, Don't worry to go. That the, my wife is passed. I said, Pass what? It's fine. It was a shock unto me, but we just thank God because. She's a, a she's a prayer warrior and she can intercede for, for anybody you know, to make sure that everybody is comfortable and she impacted so many lives and she's a good borrower, even though she will not get the money back. So she's just, she has just uh, fulfilled her own part on, in life. It amazes me and you on this on the earth that we should do likewise and impact lives and do the will of God before it is our own turn. May the Lord bless all the children and may our soul rest in peace.
We want to clap for Jesus. Let's clap for God. Let's clap for the Lord for wonderful lives well spent. Uh, we'll just take one more testimony from the neighborhood. To our time, if we have anyone from the neighborhood, wants to share. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let's have a ready so that we'll make it balance. We have a about two moments. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, we thank God for uh, the testimony we've had so far. I just briefly, I, I think I became in contact with this family maybe about 1994-95 when I bought a piece of land here. And at that time, there was the money they used to pay and they, I wasn't around. Uh, I came around and I was told that half. And that was about 95 or 97 that about. Uh, Already, what I wanted to say has been said by others. Uh, she was very kind, so generous to the fault. And then, uh, many occasions, there was a time uh, I was having some financial challenge, and I, uh, I was very close to the family. And uh, she met me on the way. I was coming from such a world going now. She met me on the way. And uh, I don't know whether she knew I was, uh, she was going to meet me. She has already, you know, she was holding it, I mean, 1,000 in, in her hand. And uh, she goes, near me, I'm just that they take that they take. I said, What is that? I said, No, 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 no. I have some money. He forced that money on me. And uh, many many times she did that, not only to me, to everyone around this place here, except she did not know you are in age. And this is the kind of woman she was. And um, I thank God because of her zeal, zeal for the things of God. She was very zealous and uh, she really wanted to serve God, and she's the best. She did the best she could. And uh, I want to just play with her the first year. She's gone. And uh, nobody knows the day he or she is going to die. You don't know what is going to kill you and where you're going to die. All you need to know is that get yourself prepared every moment. Because death can come to everybody. We all hold death. Everybody is going to die. But we, only, we always pray that we should live long. But I'm sure you don't live long. What do you do? Are you God? No. People who are dead today, who are still going to die for the end of the day, it's not the call. So prepare yourself. And uh, let me tell you, what you sow is what you reap. If you if you if you roll, if you if, if you sow sin, you die in your sin, you will go to hellfire. If you sow righteousness, and uh, you will reap righteousness, and you get to heaven. Please, we have one life to live and one time to die. Please, if you are not giving life to Christ here, learn from her. She never knew she was going to die when she died. And you don't know when you are going to die. Please give your life to Christ and shall be well with you. I want to pray that the Lord will keep the children, the Lord will prolong their days, the Lord will prosper them. And the Lord, their mother, sat until she died. They will serve that same God until they die. They will not die prematurely. They will live long and do the will of God in their life. And for our daddy here, I pray that the Lord will bless her with long time. It is not easy. I know, I know that the little to throw them, but yet I still pray the Lord will strengthen her, encourage her heart, and she will not die before, I mean, before her time and time. So thank you very much for everybody, all of us who are here. The Lord will bless all of us together. Well with you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. We'll be moving on in the service um, as we listen to the word of life. Does any word anything we need now? Is that word that is able to give life. And to bring the word to us is our pastor, the pastor of the church where our mommy served, you know, for a long time. I'd like to invite our pastor, Pastor Naramola, as we listen to the word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So God, be the glory, great things he has done. So Lord, be the word that he gave us his own. And his life has done for sin. And the 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. you once again this evening. We want to thank you for your love for us. We want to thank you for the ultimate sacrifice of your son so that we, your creature, might be saved. We are grateful to you for all that you've done in the life of your daughter. We want to thank you for the life that she led. We want to praise your name because of the salvation of her soul and her commitment to you. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. And this evening, as we celebrate her departure, it's our prayer that none of us here we miss heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. As your word come briefly this evening, let your light shine upon your word Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. You. We pray for comfort for every member of the family in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask, oh God, that you will uphold her husband Amen. and all her children in the name of Jesus. Amen. A particular battle that she has fought and fought. You are delivered with to her now. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. That battle will cease in the life of our children in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's be seated. I'd like to appreciate God for the privilege we have to gather this evening. Now with heart. Three messages this evening. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if you didn't hear anything again this evening, you have heard from my brother, his son. He has told you Jesus is the, the way, the hope. If you don't know him, it doesn't matter whom you are, it doesn't matter what you have. If you don't know Jesus, there's no hope. Hallelujah. So, I just like to add a bit to what you have heard this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Our sister, Sister Mumiola Begi, lived a good life. You've heard the testimonies of people around her. When your time comes, because if Jesus tarries one day, even though we lived in a dangerous time right now, where it's not everybody who is privileged to function we're having for her this evening hallelujah but god will intervene in our nation hallelujah Amen. because you know by the reason of what is going on in the country it's not everybody some people even that they don't see, they don't know where they are their corpse is that will not be our portion in jesus name Amen. so we want to thank god for this privilege to celebrate her and use this opportunity to also talk to us as god's children Okay, as people that Jesus loved, God loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes. So nobody is excluded from the plan of salvation. Hallelujah. Nobody, all of us, God loved us so much that God gave the very best. God did everything that He could do for you and for me in giving Jesus. Hallelujah. And when he was preparing to leave, he told his disciples, I'm going to the Father. You know where I'm going. And Thomas said, we don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said, ah, have I been with you for so long? And yet, you don't know the Father? And Jesus told them, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Hallelujah. If you follow Jesus, you will not end in petition. You will not end in darkness. Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place. I'm going to prepare a place for you. John chapter 14, if you read from verse 1 of that scripture. Don't let your heart be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. There are two destinations after leaving the earth. Heaven and hell. Hallelujah. 
And some of us, by grace of God, we've had a glimpse of what that means. Hallelujah. That's the reality that awaits every man. Is either of the two. You either end with Christ in heaven or you end with Satan in hell. Because we know that when God created man, his original intention was not for man to go to hell. As a, as a matter of fact, his intention was that the earth would be an extension of heaven. That was the original plan. Genesis chapter 1. We read from 96. When God conceptualized the creation of man, give man dominion over everything. So, replenish the earth, take charge of everything. So, his plan for us is a good plan. But of course, you know, in Genesis chapter 3, man missed it. We lost by disobedience. So, Satan came in and sin entered the world. Because in chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, the first 10 verses, you read the story of the four, first murder that was committed on the earth. So, sin came in, but God in his love for us also made a way of escape because whosoever sin, the scriptures say, is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. So, if you are here this evening and you are still, you're still living anyhow, I'd like to tell you, your life is alone. Hallelujah. Your life is what? Alone. James chapter 4, verse 14. Ask a very pertinent question. Let me read that scripture very quickly. It says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It says, It's even a vapor that appeared for a time, a little time, and then vanishes away. Hallelujah. That's the definition of a man's life. It's like a vapor. And women are cooking in the kitchen and they open the pot, something come out like that, you know. And as, as soon as it appears, it disappears. Hallelujah. That's a vapor. Hallelujah. Even if you live to be, even Methuselah that lived 100 years, the scripture says to still breathe was like a vapor. Hallelujah. Because a thousand years, the scripture says, is like a day in the sight of God. A day is like a thousand years. In heaven, there is no concept of time. So when we when die, or somebody transit here on earth, Christians, as a matter of fact, we know that we don't die. We sleep. Hallelujah. We sleep. We don't die. Christians don't die. Unbelievers, people who, don't, who are not connected to Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, they are those that we should weep for when they die. Hallelujah. If you are a child of God, you are connected, you have accepted the provision of God for eternal life through Christ Jesus, then you don't have anything to fear. Hallelujah. If that come today, you are sure that you wake up in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I can I can share, you know, scenarios like this. I believe that God allowed me to have that experience for your know, admonition of the brethren. I lost somebody years ago and of course in the process of mourning and all of that there were three that were Christians in the family at that time. God told me somebody was going to die in my family but I didn't know he was the one. But where I'm going is that the, the younger sister who was a third of us in the family as a Christian, he was the first person to become a child of God, to get born again. So when he died, God gave my sister a revelation. When she was sharing with me, she said, look, when I saw him, when I saw him, I couldn't even recognize him again because of the glory and the splendor, the, the kind of song that they were singing where he was, that there was nothing to compare with that on earth. And of course, because God wanted her to see that her brother, the angel who was showing her, you know, that, that scenery, of course, opened her eyes and then she recognized that, ah, this is what they, hallelujah. And then she wanted to go and, you know, and join them. And the angel said, not so. Eh? I just wanted to see where he is. Hallelujah. And of course, that changed her narrative. But when she came back, she began to cry, not because,
because of the person that died. She was crying because she didn't want to come back. <laughs> and of course, you know that if she didn't come back, we'll put the image in here. Hallelujah. Are you getting the point? So, heaven is real. That's the point that I am making. And for those who are God's children, heaven is our gain. Hallelujah. None of us will miss it in the mighty name of Jesus. The only thing that can make anybody to miss heaven is sin. Hallelujah. But Jesus is the solution to the problem of sin. Is the solution to the problem of sin. Is the one who can deal with the issue of sin in your life. A man came to Jesus, Nicodemus by name. John chapter 3. Came to him by night. Hallelujah. And Jesus told him, you must be born again. He said, what does that mean? I'm an old man. <laughs> Am I going to enter into my mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, no, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. When you accept God's provision for eternal life, the spirit of God begins a work in you that changes your life. Hallelujah. Things are different now. Something happened to me when I gave my life. To Jesus, things are different now. Something happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus. Hallelujah. That's a summary of my own testimony. Because in those days before Jesus delivered me and saved my soul, Sunday morning, when everybody is going to church, I'm going to be a Palo. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The day I encountered Jesus, there was a gathering of Christians and I was there to disrupt them. I didn't like the SUs. We used to call Christians SU in those days. Hallelujah. I was there to disrupt these SU people. What are they doing? Hallelujah. I was disturbing them. Their leader came and pleaded, you know, that night by God's mercy. The nets of the Most High God caught me and brought me into the kingdom. Hallelujah. What am I saying? You need to make a decision. It's an opportunity that we're here this evening celebrating our sister. You need to make a decision for Jesus today because if you die in your sin, there is no more remedy. Hallelujah. No more remedy. No more remedy. That is the only that's the only sacrifice for sin. Jesus is the only sacrifice for sin. Hallelujah. And I implore you this evening. As we celebrate our sister, she has finished her own race. She has ended well. Hallelujah. But when it is your time, what will be the story? There are two statements that may come when you transit to the other side of eternity. Well done. Good and faithful steward. Hallelujah. But depart from me, you walk of iniquity. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is the only one who can empower any man to live above sin. And it's simple. I want to say, Pastor, how does that? It's by your faith in his word. Hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, doesn't matter whom you are, whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. So the life you are living now is a loan. And you will repay one day. At your own appointed time, the giver of life, the one who breathed into the nostrils of men in the beginning and men became living souls, will call you back. Just like he's going to call me back. Hallelujah. Except the rapture happens in our time and we're changed. We're transformed by the power of God to go and meet with Jesus. Otherwise, if we tarry here, we shall all sleep. Hallelujah. But the good news is that if you sleep in Christ, you will wake up. It's going to be a glorious resurrection. Hallelujah. So I charge you, I so encourage my brothers that don't, don't weep like those who don't have hope. I'm glad you're a child of God. I'm glad, mommy, 
Daddy, they've shown you the path of life, the way, and you already know Christ. That's the greatest thing that can happen to anybody. Hallelujah. And people who are poor, multi-millionaires, they are behind their and they are in chains. Hallelujah. I pray that will not be our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As I conclude this evening, remember always that your life is alone. Who's the air? Ah, it's my life. Me how I like. Let me leave me alone. Let me live. Let me live my life the way I like. Ah. You will know whether it's your life or not. Hallelujah. When the owner of the life call for it. Eh? On the day of death, there is no excuse. Though. Doesn't matter whom you are. No excuse. Once that appointed time comes, because the scripture says that it is appointed unto man to die once and after that. Judgment. Hallelujah. May our judgment not be unto condemnation in the name of Jesus. Beloved, how are you managing the life that God has given to you? You know, I used to work in a financial institution, and you know, in those days, uh, reports of people they will apply for loan as soon as you disperse the loan. The first thing they're going to do is to go and uh, buy, you know, buy a car, or they go and marry, uh, particularly those cocoa farmers in, uh, in some part of the country. Hallelujah. Eh? Sometimes they collect your money and they say, okay, you know, it's, it's harvest time. So you come and take cocoa when, uh, so you give them money. The first thing they're going to do is to marry more wives and out of how you manage your life. That's the point. Hallelujah. How are you managing your life? That life is a loan. One day, the owner is going to ask you. As we bow our head in prayer this evening, I'd like you to reflect. What if I'm the next in line? What? Hallelujah. Oh, I shall not die, but live. Except Jesus by rapture. Except rapture, of course, all of us must die. It's a death that we must pay. Hallelujah. But we need to pre prepare for what lies ahead. Okay, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. He said, no man comes to the Father except by me. So it doesn't matter what you believe. If you don't believe Jesus, if you don't follow his way and his instruction, you are running the risk of eternal separation from God. I pray for you tonight as you listen to me and you make the decision. In that name that's above every other name, the gate of hell shall be closed against you. In the name of Jesus. Evening, Father, please help me to end well. Help me to align with you. I've had your word, I've had the admonition tonight that I should surrender to Jesus. Lord, I'm asking you to forgive my sin. As many that are here, you have never surrendered your life to Jesus this evening. As we close our eyes and our head bow, I want you to just lift your hand to heaven as a mark of surrenderness to God so that I'm sure you are there and then I can pray with you right where you are seated this evening you want to accept jesus as lord and savior because the scripture says that with heart man believeth unto righteousness hallelujah with mouth confession is made unto salvation so where you are seated this evening if you are making that decision just raise your hand so i'm sure you are there god bless you just raise it and then you can put it down so i'm sure you're there hallelujah just pray this prayer and say father Thank you for your word that I've had tonight. I'm asking that you forgive my sin. Thank you for all that you have done already through your son Jesus. And this evening, I've heard your word. And I raise my hand in surrenderness to you that you will save my soul and forgive my sin. And help my understanding so that I won't go back to those sin that used to hold me down. Thank you for hearing me in Jesus' mighty name. The rest of us, I want us to pray and say, Father, whatever it will take, don't let me miss heaven in the name of Jesus. Can you go ahead? Whatever it will take, don't let me miss heaven in the name of Jesus. Don't let me miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. 
whatever may be the plan of the wicked, the enemy, the adversary, concerning me.